Hi, welcome to the Revelation of Jesus. This is episode 60. So let's just jump right in. We are in Revelation chapter 13. Father, once again, we come into your presence. We want understanding. We want clarity. So Father, give us another revelation of Jesus as we look at this challenging chapter. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So we left off. Uh, let's go back to verse 2. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, the mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. So remember, the dragon is the devil. Now we're looking at this beast, which is a, a composite beast that parallels Daniel chapter 7, the little horn. Of chapter 7. So remember we said that the little horn was papal Rome. Okay? And I know that in this time of economism and, and everyone is uh, reverencing the Pope, we need to remember that this is a, a biblical prophecy which was foretelling what was going to happen throughout church history. So John Receive this vision, <laughs> you know, 50 years, uh, 30, 50 years after Jesus resurrected, okay? So we're looking at now, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it been mortally wounded. So historicists, remember we said that this little horn power was going to a rule for 1,260 years years, right? Three and a half years in prophetic language, 42 months in prophetic language. And so we know that that time period was from 538 to 1798. So in 1798, Napoleon sends General, General Berthier and, and he went to Rome and he arrested the Pope and he took away his political power. And I think it was in 1804 um, when uh, Napoleon, you know, he, he crowned himself emperor. Uh, history records that I think it was Pope Pius VIII. Uh, he was about to put the crown on Napoleon. And Napoleon takes the crown out of the uh, Pope's hands and he places the crown on his head. Kind of letting the Pope know, listen, you're not in power anymore. I'm in control. And so on 1798, that's when we saw that the political power of the papacy was done away with. But then the Bible says that this wound was going to heal. So in 1929, Mussolini executed what, was, what is known as the Concordant of 1929, which with the papacy, which restored to them their properties and power. And all you have to do is look at recent 20th century, um, uh, you know, regarding the Pope, how the Pope has been uh, reverenced, you know, from Pope John II to the current Pope Francis, you know, the world is just embracing uh, the papal, the papacy. This was foretold. Now, but let's continue, right? And, and it says, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshiped the dragon, okay, who gave authority to the beast. Uh, this, is, this is not Lafitte speaking. This is what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying that they worshiped indirectly the dragon, which is Satan, okay? And he says, because Satan gave authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, let's get the clues, right? The clues says, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy, right? So we know that this beast is going to speak blasphemous words, right? So let's look at that right now. Let's look at that right now, because in the Bible, blasphemy defines it. If you have your Bibles, go to John chapter 10, verse 30 to 33. This is what how the Bible defines blasphemy. Many times we think blasphemy is 
uh, let's say, uh, uh, the, the, the portrait of Jesus, you know, on the cross, you know, drinking wine or something. That's our interpretation of blasphemy. But the Bible defines blasphemy in this way. John chapter 10, verse 30 to 33, it says Jesus was about to be stoned for claiming to be one with the Father. And the Jews who were going to kill him says, look, for a good work, we don't stone you, but we are stoning you for blasphemy. And then they, they define blasphemy because you being a man make yourself God. So according to this text, blasphemy is when a man is accorded the place of God. Now, Jesus is God, right? So now, if you go to Mark chapter 2, verse 7, right? Here, here we see another definition of blasphemy. Jesus had just forgiven a, a, a man of his sins. And the scribes, they said, Mark chapter 2, verse 7, Why does this man speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? So for a man to make such claims would constitute blasphemy, according to the Bible's own definition. So according to Papal Rome, right? He says that he is the representative of God on earth. And he also, they, they you know, go to a Catholic priest, they will say that they forgive your sins. Here in my notes, it says from the book, uh, and this is in Latin, Promta Biblioteca Canonica Juridica Morales Teologica, and that's uh, a volume, uh, 6, page 25 to 29, says this. The Pope is crowned with a triple crown as king of heaven and of earth and of the lower regions. Moreover, the superiority and the power of the Roman pontiff by no means pertains only to earthly things, but even over angels than whom he is greater. If angels err in their faith or think contrary to the faith, they could be judged and excommunicated by the Pope, for he is of such dignity and power that he forms one and the same tribunal with Christ. The Pope, as it is, is God on earth, chief king of kings. My friends, that's blasphemy, okay? Now, don't get it twisted. You know, I'm not attacking a person, right? I don't know Pope Francis. I did not know Pope John II. I'm saying the Bible is teaching us that the, popal, the papal system, papal Rome, is the problem, okay? So it says here in verse 6, that he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell on earth. He was granted to make war with the saints and to overcome them, right? And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. History records how papal Rome persecuted the Christians throughout, especially during the Middle Ages. Okay, so this is where now the warning is given. And let me just make sure I have here, I've given you everything in my notes, right? It's given, you know, so, so Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 is Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, right? And so Revelation chapter 12, verse 6 and 14, kind of parallels the same Daniel chapter 7. Remember, a principle is given. It gets amplified, right? It gets explained, gets repeated, gets amplified. And so that's what we're seeing. So John is, is getting a picture of what's going to happen in the last days. There's going to be a war of words, but it's going to be regarding worship, okay? And so this is where now he continues to say, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose name have not been written in the book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. So there's gonna be a, a divide, those that follow Jesus and those who follow the beast. And it says here in verse nine, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity, and he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. So here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So in my notes, it says here, Protestant scholars, this is not just an Adventist uh, interpretation. Remember, this is the historicist. They say, 
Protestant scholars throughout the centuries have identified this beast, beast with the papacy of the Middle Ages. And we'll leave it here, and we'll continue this tomorrow. May God bless you. Bye-bye.